to receive them. Retired. Retired, Standish. One more inspection trip and they tell me that I'm through. Foundation, Standish. The army's going to pot, to pot, I say. Young jackanets playing polo, politics, and um, tea dances on Sundays. And me, retired. Quite different from the old days of Kabul, sir. Ah, Kabul. <laughs> oh, what a battle! What an army! <laughs> By Harry, we gave them what for a Kabul, eh, Standish? You remember? You were there. I'm sorry, sir, but I wasn't a Kabul. Huh? What? No, sir, I joined you as a green subaltern 15 years after Kabul, sir. Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes, to be sure. Well, you should have been there. Standish, I will begin my inspection in one hour. One hour, sir! Uh, sir Bertram. No? Oh, thank you. Mr. Rose, Mr. Storm, reporting for patrol, sir. Your report? A large force of Afridi... One sir. moment, please. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Brigadier General Sir Bertram Cecil, Mr. Rhodes, and Mr. Storm. Inexcusable, reprehensible. Look at you, both of you. Buttons undone, torn off, uniforms untidy, soil, disgusting. Stand steady, sirs. You're still at attention. Excuse me, General, but these men, sir, have just returned from action. I will not be interrupted. Action or no action. They should jolly well know enough to be properly dressed before reporting to a commanding officer. Look at them. Look more like rag pickers than officers of the Crown. By Harry, things were different in Kabul. Um, none of this modern shilly-shallying, this, this coddling of young officers. An officer was an officer in those days. Sorry, sir, but we thought this was important. Sir, a large force of Afridis under Mohammed Akbar is gathering at Chakdara Pass. If we move fast, we can bottle them. Silence! By all that's holy before anything else comes discipline. The only thing that keeps us separate from filthy beggars like this Akbar fella. Discipline first, and I intend to maintain it. One hour. Formal inspection on the parade ground. Help! <laughs> This stable is unspeakably filthy. <laughs> this is the dirtiest lantern I have seen in all my years of service. Standish, I expected more from you. You showed great promise at Kabul. The lamp will be polished, sir, and uh, I was not a composer. What an ignominious end for a glorious career, inspecting a dirty stable. But by Harry, I'm not going to give up without a fight. I'll show your Mohammed Akbar a trick or two before I'm through with him. Mohammed Akbar, sir? Precisely. I served five years here at Fort Hora. Know every foot of the territory, and I know the Afridis too. Rascals, all of them. And your Akbar is no different from the rest of them. Standish? Sir? 
I personally will command your squadrons in this punitive action against the Aptis. But, sir, that is an order! Of course, it really requires the whole regiment, but that's out of the question. The fort has to be defended, so uh, you will stay behind. Oh, too bad, Standish. We can't be together in action again like we were at Kabul. Too bad. Colonel Standish, oh. you have your orders. Like Kabul. Only was muzzleloaders against spears and swords in those days. Ah, oh, easy roads. There's just a chance the general might know what he's doing. He's old enough to stand on his own two feet. He's also old enough to fall down. Mr. Rhodes. Sir? As soon as we leave the fort, we will separate. You and Mr. Storm will take B Squadron and circle west of the pass. West, you understand? I will take A Squadron. Yes, sir. You will move in extended column, traveling openly, without any attempt at concealment. But, sir... Hey, what? Sir, we might as well announce our presence with a full regimental band. We lose all possible advantage of surprise. Precisely, Mr. Rhodes. Precisely. Left wheel, and our section, forward, forward. has not gone east road, Saab. The General Saab has taken them to the mouth of the pass. You're positive, not to the east. There's no mistake. No mistake, Saab. With my own eyes, I saw them go to the pass. Thank you, Dafta. That's all. What's Cecil of Kabul trying to prove? Does he think he can win another war all by himself? I'll admit his strategy is a little vague. Strategy? He'll lead those men straight into a massacre. Do we just let him do it? It's customary to obey orders. Then I'll change the orders. Those are my men in A Squadron, my responsibility. I'm not letting some senile old relic with illusions of grandeur get them butchered. Oh, come off it, Rhodes. He's forgotten more about soldiering than we'll ever know. It's what he's forgotten that worries me. A minute ago, you were complaining he was trying to win the whole war by himself. Now you're trying to do the same thing. All right, Storm, I'll give the old fool his chance. His last chance. Forward! March! <laughs> The general didn't figure on this. We may be detained indefinitely, if not permanently. The old man's counting on our support from the west. He's had it. We've got to break through. At least warn the old fool to turn back. You can't take a column through that with less than 50% casualties. I'm not talking about a column. I'm going to try it alone through the mountains. You're in command here. When you get out, take the men and join A Squadron at the pass. Crystal Dar Saab, you're in command here. When you get out, take the men and join A Squadron at the pass. I could make better time alone. So could I. Let's go. A squadron. Under a flag of truce. What's the great Cecil up to now? Stop where you are, Lancers. Say what you have to say. I bring you the word of Brigadier General Sir Bertram Cecil, sir. Brigadier General? Oh, -ho. Note, my brothers, mark well how important I have become. 
<laughs> it is not often a poor border truck can boast of so distinguished an enemy. Speak! The general requests a meeting with you. Talk the terms of peace. There will be no terms but mine. <laughs> Still, it will amuse us to listen to your mighty general plead for mercy from Mohammed Akbar. Tell him to come forward alone and unarmed, and I will hear him. Go now! Send him to me! Well, now he's in for it. I knew we should have stopped him before he got this far. Maybe you were right, Rhodes. Talking terms with Akbar is like trying to talk sense to a coiled cobra. <laughs> Here he comes, like a moth to the flame. Welcome, great general. My poor camp is honored that you have come to surrender your sword in person. <clears throat> to shed blood without purpose is folly and waste. Even the wily old desert fox knows that. If he thinks he's going to surrender my squadron without a fight, he's... Yes, my Harry. To fight would be folly, so I've come here to... <clears throat> to give you a chance to surrender. Surrender? I? Mohammed Akbar? Precisely. <laughs> You're barely outnumbered, surrounded by a regiment of lancers. Yes, by Jove. Hup. An entire regiment. Regiment? But you have but one quadrant at the mouth of the pass. We have the advantage in numbers and position. A regiment, sir. When a general moves in the field, he moves with no less than a regiment. You are outmaneuvered, outfranked, and outnumbered. Surely, Mohammed Akbar thinks more of his followers than to sacrifice their lives without purpose. I don't believe it. He can't expect Akbar to fall for a colossal bluff like that. Look again. He's falling for it. We have seen no regiment. Only a handful of lancers. You'll see them when I jolly well want you to. But if you want proof, just fire your rifle into the air. You're completely encircled, Sam. convince you with bullets and steel? He's done it. The old man's done it. What a man. Three trumpeters and he's got a regiment. You start it, cannot. Ah. Thank you, sir. There is still the West, General. Before your regiment can close in upon us, my men will melt away into the hills. <laughs> I have a squadron even now moving into position to seal off the pass from the west. And I'll give you time enough to see that for yourself. Padako Gurbande. Lasha, our winner. B squadron. He expects them to see B squadron. We were his ace in the hole. <laughs> Brilliant general. I'm a man who appreciates deception if it is bold enough, and you almost deceived me. Had there been a squadron to the west, I might have surrendered. I will now risk the chance that your other squadrons were no more than so many trumpeters. Seize him! <laughs> Take your taste, General. Well, I have tasted worse. <clears throat> I can't remember when. Uh, oh, no complaints, you understand. But after all, I got myself into this mess. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased that you understand, General. You know, it is a source of great satisfaction to me to have you as my guest, to uh, exchange military viewpoints with one so experienced. 
Don't you? Uh, fancy yourself somewhat of a general, too, I take it, huh? No, I flatter myself. I have a talent for leadership. <laughs> You're batting on a sticky wicket, old boy. You can't possibly hope to win, you know. Success breeds success, General. With each victory, I gain more followers. One day I will command enough men to drive the British out forever. Akbar, you're a perfect scoundrel. Thank you, General. <laughs> I can't say that I blame you for crowing a bit. Uh, I would have done the same thing myself, after all. Capturing a general. Uh, deucedly careless of me, though. Uh, it, it wasn't all bluff, you know. Uh, I did have another squadron, B Squadron, moving in from the west. And it would have worked, too, if they'd been in position and, and if you'd seen them. Somebody blundered. There was no blunder, General. Huh? Well, how do you know that? I did not know until tonight. A party of my men has just returned from the west where they came upon your beast squadron and detained it. Thunderation. Pinned them down, huh? Oh, that explains it. A pair of bright young officers in charge of the squadron, too. Oh, I knew they wouldn't let me down if they could possibly help it. See, unfortunately, my force was too small to detain them for long. We inflicted some casualties, but the main body escaped us. It has since joined your first squadron at the mouth of the pass. Good for them. Broke through, huh? <laughs> Jolly good. <laughs> this calls for a celebration by Harry. Akbar, I'll have another spot of that beastly tea of yours. Mm, a pleasure, General. <laughs> Yes, only the remains of two squadrons huddled behind cover at the mouth of the pass, waiting for me to swoop down and destroy them. And how, may I ask, do you propose to do that? One squadron of Lancers is worth a dozen of your ragamuffin regiments, or whatever you call them. Well, perhaps, if we were to attempt a frontal attack by day or night. Oh, no, 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 General. You see, even now, my men are quietly slipping behind both flanks of your little force. By dawn, we will be at their backs. And instead of your men being behind cover, they will be exposed. Then, we just drive them into the pass and cut them into ribbons. <laughs> An auspicious beginning for my private little war, do you not think? Akbar, you do have a head upon your shoulders at that. I give the next ten years of my life to be there when you lose it. Oh, I consider that a rare compliment, General. And now, if you're pleased to forgive me, I must go and join my men. Take very good care of him. You should bring considerable ransom from the British authorities. Sleep well, General. Are you two young jackanapes doing here? Why aren't you with your squadron? The squadron was cut off. Yes, sir. I know, but that's no excuse. We tried to reach you in time to warn you, sir, and we saw what happened. You should have wasted no time in getting back. Most unsoldierly conduct. Dashing about willy nilly. Inexcusable. Yes, sir. Reprehensible. Yes, sir. For all the harm's done now, more serious matters afoot. Akbar Pompous ass is bragging that his ragamuffins are outflanking our men. Plans to hit them from behind at dawn. We heard, sir. How do we stop him, sir? We don't. We let him do it. We withdraw A squadron about a mile. Then we reverse B squadron's positions. When the beggars make their move, we have them caught between us. We close in and crush them like so many beetle nuts. Well, what's the matter? Don't you understand simple strategy? Oh, yes, sir. Excellent strategy, sir. Well? Well, there's a slight complication, sir. Complication? What complication? Uh, how do we get from here to the mouth of the pass? We'll never make it in time on foot, sir. Oh, troublesome detail. Simple matter of transportation. 
Such details don't concern generals. Details taken care of by staff officers. I can only see two sentries from here. But I can also see several horses. Mr. Rhodes? Coming, Mr. Storm. Like I said, uh, beetle nut. When you hit, you hit hard, General. Uh, not as hard as I used to, though. Not like Kabul. Oh, getting soft, I suppose. You know, uh, I was beginning to like that Akbar fellow quite a bit. <coughs> Must be getting old. What am I doing with this thing? Here, get me a horse. Sorry you couldn't have been there, Standish. Missed all the excitement. <laughs> Ah, uh, then, you've had your share, what? I'll never forget the way you handled yourself at Kabul. Thank you, sir, but I wasn't at... Um, thank you, sir. Uh, ah, Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Storm caused you quite a bit of trouble, didn't I? Just the same, you should not have come back for me. What I mean to say is... Uh, thank you. Why? I know it's not easy to follow an old fool who should know better than to be leading troops into action at his age. Well, then... Uh, You've both got many years in which to learn better. Come. 